Have you ever tried to program your microcontroller to read the status of several buttons through a single input pin? Well, such a technique is quite useful, especially when the number of the available pins in your microcontroller is limited. In this tutorial, we are going to construct a simple voltage divider circuit to let us do that task using STM32 microcontroller with the help of an to digital converter and software button debounce so we don't get false readings and with the help of direct memory access the microcontroller won't waste any time sampling voltage variations we got a hardware and software to deal with today so without any further ado let's jump on in Before diving into our topic, I want to let you know guys that in my next video I'm planning to expand the project that we are going to work on today in order to build a simple musical instrument. So if you are interested, please subscribe to this channel and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss anything. Alright, so before diving into coding, let's design the hardware that we are going to deal with. The display circuit diagram shows nothing but a voltage divider with several pull down resistors. Each button is connected in series with the pull down resistor, so a voltage divider does its job only when the button is pressed. So what I want my circuit to achieve is the following. When this button is pressed, my microcontroller will read quarter the main voltage. And when this one is pressed, my microcontroller will read half the main voltage. And when the last one is pressed, my microcontroller will read three quarters of the main voltage. And this of course can be done by selecting the correct values of resistors with the help of voltage divider formula. R1 is the pull-up resistor and I've chosen it to be 10 kilo ohm. R2 is the pull-down resistor. V is the main supply voltage. And VADC is the voltage that we want to read. The only unknown here is R2 and because we are going to interface three buttons, we need to find three different values for R2. And this can be done using the voltage ratios as VADC. And by doing so, if we set our MCU to sample voltage readings at this pin over an to digital converter, theoretically, we are going to get roughly one of these values, depending on the button status. Using these values, we can build four different boundaries with three different regions, where we can take different actions. For example, if the AD series 1000, then depending on the region we have defined, we light up a blue LED and we can take different actions with different readings. By doing that, we have actually managed to read the status of several buttons using one single input pin of our MCU. Note that this method can be implemented no matter what your MCU is. Now it's time to implement this algorithm in our code and see how it works in real life. So let's start with the MCU pin configuration uh, and let's begin with the ADC configuration. So any of the ADC channels can do the job. Just choose whatever you want. The only setting we are going to activate in the ADC settings menu is continuous conversion mode because we are going to activate DMA sampling. And since we are going to scan one channel at a time, only one rank will be enabled. And the sampling time is measured in CPU cycles. And here actually I want to point something out related to the sampling time. Uh, as you can see I've chosen the longest uh, sampling time I can choose. Because if we look at the total uh, sample conversion time, you will notice that it's quite fast. As you can see from the clock configuration, the ADC clock currently is 12 MHz. And the total analog to digital conversion time can be calculated using this formula. And if we plug the numbers that we have got in our configuration, we are going to get 21 microseconds. This means that every 21 microseconds, we are going to get a sample, which is quite fast for our application. We are just interfacing several buttons. If you are dealing with some sort of a sensor, you are going to adjust the total conversion time depending on your need. So after completing setting ADC driver settings, we are going to enable DMA in circular mode with half for data alignment because remember that our ADC sample width is 12 bit. One last thing I want to mention here is that as you can see, I've configured three GPIO pins in order to toggle 
three LEDs in order to visualize different actions when different buttons are pressed. The rest of the configuration is quite standard stuff. If you want more detailed explanation, please refer to the video shown in the card above. So after completing the configuration part, let's jump into our code. So here we see all the configuration functions generated by the QBMX. First of all, the DMA buffer is defined. After that, the ADC is started with DMA. Believe it or not, from now on, every voltage sample will be stored automatically in the DMA buffer that we have specified before. And inside an infinite loop, we are going to take action depending on the sampled voltage value resulting from button press event. And as you may have noticed, these are the boundaries that we were talking about when we were designing our voltage divider circuit because this will determine what button has been pressed. For illustration, let's consider this event where the sampled value is between 500 and 1500. And according to our voltage divider design, we know that this button is definitely pressed because in such case, the sample value will be around 1000. And once the condition is verified, we see that an LED is turned on. Otherwise, all LEDs will be turned off. So now let's see how this code will work on in practice. As you can see, our code does not work 100% as we have planned, right? because we didn't take into consideration the noise resulting from button bounce which is resulting in unstable behavior of the MCU so we need to implement some algorithm inside our code to take into account this problem which is obviously button debounce algorithm so the button debounce function will take only one parameter and it is the DMA buffer that we had initialized before and inside the function a return flag is initialized with a value of zero this flag will be only activated when we are sure that a button has been pressed. After that, a static variable is initialized with the name of level. This variable can be considered as a software capacitor. So let me tell you why. As long as a button is pressed, this variable will be incremented. Otherwise, it will be decremented. And when its value reaches a certain level, we are going to activate the return flag that we had talked about before. And the values of acceptance level and restart level depends actually on the clock that your MCU runs on. So in practice, what I'm actually trying to do here is to delay the MCU before taking any action when a button is actually pressed. This implementation will get rid of any unwanted button bounce related signals and no false event will be triggered. I've actually chosen the following values for my macros. You can adjust them depending on your MCU clock. All right, so let's return to our functions. One last thing to mention here is that since our software capacitor is initialized to be static, its value will be reserved and won't be lost after executing this function. And remember that for every button you have connected to your voltage divider circuit that we have talked about before, you are going to have a copy of this function. So what I've done here is that just copied the button debounce function. So I have in total three functions and three buttons. Simple mathematics. All right. So after implementing button debounce functions, let's see how they are used inside our code. So after integrating button debounce functions inside the main code, it will look like this and you will notice that button debounce function is called inside every condition so we make sure to take action only and only when a button is really pressed because by doing so we are actually getting rid of noise and button bounce signals and you will notice that button debounce functions are called when no button is pressed in order to let the software capacitors discharge now it's time to upload this firmware to our MCU and see how it will perform Obviously, now our firmware performs better and stable. However, working with LEDs was a little bit boring. So in my next video, I'm planning to expand the code to make it more interesting. This brings me to the end of this video. If you have learned something new, please like the video and share it with your friends and let them know about useful electronics. And you may consider supporting me on Patreon to let such videos come more frequently. Thank you for watching and bye bye.